I often wonder if I'm the perfect husband. My job demands a lot from me, and there are times when I come home feeling a bit down. I might not be rolling in cash, but we manage to live comfortably. Our home is nice, we have two decent cars, my wife has a wardrobe full of stylish clothes, and our eight-year-old daughter Vanessa has plenty of expensive toys. At the end of the day, I see myself as a simple, hard-working man who deeply loves his family. Gloria and I have enjoyed almost 12 years of marital happiness. However, recently, something seems off between us, a subtle shift that's hard to pinpoint. Gloria has been distant, showing an aloofness I've never seen before. She's been quick to find fault with me over small things, which isn't like her at all. I've tried talking to her about it, asking if something's bothering her that she's not telling me. But like many spouses, she brushes it off, blaming her behavior on tiredness or a tough day. Initially, I gave her space to sort through her troubles, but her detached attitude is starting to grate on my nerves. Besides, any married couple knows that problems with your spouse often spill over into the bedroom. I've always tried to keep our love life exciting and spontaneous. Being a romantic, I used to surprise Gloria with things like bringing home roses after work to set the mood. In the past, these gestures usually led to carnal moments later on. However, lately my efforts seem to be met with just a thank you and a quick kiss. Instead of appreciating them, it's like Gloria sees them as me trying to make up for something. For weeks now, Gloria hasn't shown any interest in closeness, and when I try to initiate, she either isn't in the mood or claims to have a headache. Even when she does agree, she's passive, leaving me to do all the work. As time goes on, I find myself pulling away mentally. I spend time with our daughter when I get home and try to avoid interacting with Gloria as much as possible, which only makes things worse. Feeling desperate, I've spent time at work trying to figure out what might have caused Gloria's behavior, but my introspection hasn't given me any answers. I've replayed countless scenarios in my head, trying to understand why Gloria's acting this way. The more I think about it, the more I can't shake the idea that she might be having an affair. I try to reassure myself that she'd never betray our marriage, but the thought won't go away. So I've started researching signs of infidelity, looking for any changes in behavior or routines. I haven't noticed any significant shifts, but most of my interactions with Gloria are in the evenings. Who knows what she's like during the day? Still, some of the signs of infidelity seem uncomfortably familiar, especially her changed attitude towards me. I've thought about hiring a private investigator, but without concrete evidence, it feels premature and unjustified. All I have are suspicions, not enough to justify the expense of a PI. So, I started investigating on my own, trying small tactics like calling home during the day to check if Gloria was there, but the results were inconsistent. Taking matters into my own hands, I got an old surveillance camera to discreetly set up under the eaves of our garage. I connected it to a hidden tape unit behind some paint cans, hoping to monitor any unfamiliar cars approaching our home. However, after two weeks of surveillance, there were no signs of suspicious vehicles. Sometimes I saw Gloria leaving the house, only for her to later say she'd been home all day. However, her absences were brief, seeming too short for anything significant to happen. Unless her potential lover was remarkably fast, these outings might have been just regular errands she didn't think were worth mentioning, hardly proof of an affair. As time went on, my suspicions remained. Despite no solid evidence, Gloria's mood worsened, and our carnal moments became rare, leaving me frustrated. With our twelfth anniversary approaching, I saw a chance to inject some excitement into our marriage again. I suggested celebrating with a night out, something we hadn't done in ages. Perhaps dinner and dancing could reignite the spark between us. Eager to reconnect, we arranged for Vanessa to stay at my parents' house for the night, giving us freedom without time constraints. I booked a table at Gloria's favorite restaurant, Plato's Place. As we were seated, I hoped to bring back some of the magic from our earlier years. But Gloria seemed tense for reasons I couldn't figure out. Ordering a bottle of wine seemed to relax her, and our conversation regained its playful tone. After dinner, Gloria was eager to hit the dance floor. Though I suggested trying a new club, she wanted to go to our usual spot, a cozy venue with dim lighting and music for an older crowd. Given the atmosphere and music, it wasn't a hard choice. Dancing had always been something we enjoyed together, drawing us closer in the beginning. Finding a secluded table, we had a few drinks before hitting the dance floor with nostalgic flair. It felt like going back in time, both of us enjoying the moment. After dancing for nearly an hour, we took a break at our table. As I watched Gloria gracefully move across the floor, thoughts of closeness lingered. But my attention shifted when I noticed I wasn't the only one captivated by her presence. Across the room, an incredibly attractive man sat alone at a corner table. 
his eyes fixed on Gloria's every move. A twinge of concern shot through me as I witnessed what seemed like a brief interaction between them. Did they know each other? As Gloria disappeared into the restroom, I couldn't shake the feeling that the man's gaze lingered on me with a hint of smugness. Although we were in a dance club, I puzzled over why he was there solo until it occurred to me that, like Gloria, his companion was likely in the restroom. Keeping a close eye on the man while waiting for Gloria's return, I couldn't ignore the unsettling suspicion creeping back in. When Gloria asked for another glass of wine, I hesitated. The idea of her sitting alone while I went to the bar didn't sit well with me. Catching the attention of a bartender, I opted for quicker service. Despite feeling Gloria's disappointment as the server approached, I had a sinking feeling that the evening was about to take a turn for the worse. It was a gut instinct I couldn't shake. Glancing over my shoulder, I saw the same man still seated alone in the corner, confirming my suspicion that he was indeed by himself. Who's the guy over there? I asked, catching Gloria off guard momentarily. I thought I detected a hint of panic in her eyes before she swiftly regained her composure. What guy? She responded innocently, though her tone betrayed a hint of discomfort. The guy over there? I persisted. The one you exchanged glances with on your way to the bathroom? Gloria quickly denied it. Honey, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't exchange glances with anyone. Just as our drinks arrived, I noticed Gloria's eyes darting past me. Turning, I saw the man approaching our table, bypassing me entirely as he addressed Gloria with a request to dance. No thanks, I interjected sharply, my tone revealing my displeasure. His response was mocking. I was talking to the lady, he retorted with a smirk. Yeah, well, the lady is my wife, and I decide who she dances with, I snapped back, feeling a surge of indignation. Gloria intervened, attempting to defuse the tension. Darren, you're being rude, she admonished gently. Rude? Do you even know this guy? I demanded, catching her off guard with a question. He's the one I was talking about. I don't know what's going on between you two, but it's incredibly disrespectful for him to approach my wife without even acknowledging me, I asserted firmly, turning back to Gloria to continue our conversation. Had he asked if I would mind you two dancing together, I might have considered it, but now, not a chance. I declared firmly, my frustration evident. Darren, you're being silly, Gloria retorted, her tone now edged with impatience. There's nothing going on between this gentleman and me. Yes, we're married, but you don't owe me. I'm not your slave, and if I want to dance with someone, I will. I couldn't believe my wife was speaking to me in such a disrespectful manner. It was a level of disrespect she had never shown before. Though I was seething with anger, I made a conscious effort to control my temper as she continued speaking. Honey, I just want to have some fun, she said, her tone softening. Gloria, it's our anniversary. I want to have fun too, but with you sitting here watching you dance with someone else is not my idea of fun. Especially after I've asked you not to dance with him, I responded, struggling to maintain composure. Now you're right. I don't own you, and I can't stop you from dancing with him. But if you do, then you'd better get him to take you home too, because I'll be gone after twelve years together. I could easily decipher Gloria's emotions from her expression. Despite her outward anger, I was surprised she couldn't detect the same emotions mirrored on my face. Well, it's impolite to keep this gentleman waiting while we argue. I'm going to dance with him and we'll discuss this later, she snapped, her words cutting through the tension. The jackass wore a triumphant smirk as he extended his hand for Gloria to take. She accepted, placing her hand in his as they made their way to the dance floor. I'm certain they didn't notice my departure as I slipped out the door before they even began to dance. By the time my cell phone rang, I was already several blocks away. Where the hell are you? Gloria's voice sounded contrite through the phone. I'm heading home to pack a bag. Why? I responded tersely. There was a moment of silence. What do you mean, pack a bag? Where are you going? She questioned, her tone shifting to confusion. I don't know yet, but I need to get away from you, I stated firmly. I've reached my limit. You can't be serious, Darren. It was just one dance, for heaven's sake. Are you really going to throw away twelve years of marriage over this? She pleaded. It's not just about the dance, Gloria. Why would you stay married to someone you don't love or respect? I haven't caught you in the act, but I strongly suspect you're cheating on me, maybe with the guy you just danced with. I saw how you looked at each other when you went to the bathroom, and when he came to our table, he treated me with the same disrespect a man shows the husband of the woman he's involved with. None at all, I firmly asserted. Darren, her voice softened, I do love you and respect you. 
I swear there was nothing going on between that guy and me. I would never cheat on you. Why would you even think that? You've got to be kidding me. We haven't been carnal in over two weeks. And when we are, you're barely present. You've been irritable and short-tempered for the past two months. Don't tell me you respect me because your actions tonight proved otherwise. If you're not having an affair, you're certainly acting like it, I retorted. There was a long pause before she responded. I'm sorry, Darren. I... I didn't realize. I'm sorry for how I acted. I'm sorry for tonight. I'm sorry I gave you reason to think I'm having an affair. Another brief pause. I guess I did glance at that guy on the way to the restroom. He... He was attractive. I noticed him while we were dancing too, but I'm not having an affair with him. Please, honey, please just come back and pick me up. We can talk about it. Nope. Like I said, I've had enough. I told you if you danced with that guy, you'd have to find your own way home. And I meant it. I'm pulling into our driveway right now. By the time you get home, I'll be gone. If you're having an affair, maybe you should just go home with your lover boy and forget about me. Honey, please believe me. I'm not having an affair. Look, I'll grab a cab, but please just stay there until I get home, Gloria pleaded, desperation evident in her voice, a stark contrast from earlier. We need to talk this out, please, she begged before abruptly ending the call. Upon arriving home, I swiftly packed a bag and left the house. Within twelve minutes, curiosity nagged at me. Would Gloria really take a cab home, or would the guy drop her off? I drove down the block, switched off my lights, and waited. Fifteen minutes later, a yellow cab pulled into the driveway. Gloria hurriedly exited and darted into the house. Satisfied with what I saw, I headed for a motel. Almost immediately, my phone began to ring again. I switched it off. Though I lacked concrete evidence of infidelity, my suspicions remained strong. I was nearly convinced that Gloria and the man she danced with knew each other. Perhaps now was the time to hire that private detective. If I wasn't at home, maybe she would seek solace from her lover. The following day, I scoured the yellow pages for the most promising private investigator. After visiting his office and providing a retainer, I headed to work. My secretary, Joan, informed me that Gloria had called 20 times already, and something was amiss. I explained our marital issues and my decision not to return her calls, instructing Joan to relay this message. I also informed the receptionist not to allow Gloria entry to the offices if she showed up. I needed to give the P.I. a chance to uncover the truth. Now... It was a waiting game. Later that same afternoon, Andrea, our neighbor, called. Despite my reluctance, I answered, expecting the conversation to revolve around Gloria. Darren, she began. Gloria told me about the other night. She's been trying hard to apologize, but she says you won't talk to her. That's true, I responded firmly. I have nothing to say to her. I heard a sigh on the other end. She also mentioned you suspect her of cheating on you. Do you really believe that? Unfortunately, I do. I admitted. Her behavior has been strange for over two months now. The incident the other night only reinforced my suspicions. Reinforced? She questioned. All she did was dance with a guy. No, that's not quite accurate. I saw them exchange glances before he came to our table. It was very disrespectful to me, and Gloria chose to support him. Despite my warning her about the consequences, she ignored my feelings. I'm almost certain they're romantically involved. Darren, really? I think you're jumping to conclusions. I've been your neighbor for years, and if Gloria was cheating on you, I'm pretty sure I would have noticed something. I've never seen any unfamiliar cars parked outside your house, nor have I seen any strange men coming and going. Please, she knows that dancing with that guy was a mistake. She got upset because you told her not to, but she's realized you were right. Trust me, Darren, I know Gloria, and she wouldn't cheat on you. I'm not so sure anymore, Andrea. Her actions the other night didn't exactly show love. Please, Darren, just talk to her. You won't solve anything if you don't communicate. I knew Andrea made sense, but I needed time for the private investigator to work. Andrea, do me a favor. Let her know I'll call her in a couple of weeks. I still need some time to think things over. Another sigh came through the phone. Okay, Darren, I'll pass on the message, but please promise me you'll call her then. All right, I promise, I assured her. After saying goodbye, I found myself thinking once more. Andrea and her husband Jack were close friends, and I couldn't imagine Andrea lying to me. If Gloria was indeed being unfaithful, she was doing an excellent job of hiding it. For the following two weeks, I experienced overwhelming anxiety. I reached out to the investigator multiple times, but there were no substantial updates. Eventually, he summoned me to his office, and as I took my seat, my stomach twisted with nerves. 
He pushed a manila envelope towards me, and my hand shook as I lifted it. He suggested I overlook the routine details and directed me to the bottom of page five. With shaky fingers, I flipped through the report until I reached the designated page. Could this be the evidence I desperately sought? After a thorough investigation, this office found no evidence to support the client's suspicions of infidelity by his spouse. I felt like the ground had shifted beneath me. Unsure of how to react, I looked back up at the investigator. Are you sure? I asked, disbelief evident in my tone. Mr. Barnes, my team has meticulously monitored your wife's every move over the past two weeks. We've observed the house, monitored her communications, and trailed her whenever she left. We've scrutinized her phone records and credit card statements. There's simply no indication of any affair, he affirmed. Relief washed over me, threatening to overwhelm me. I struggled to contain my emotions, resisting the urge to break down into tears of relief right there in his office. Go home, Mr. Barnes, the investigator advised. Gently return to your wife and child. In my line of work, happy endings are a rare sight. I thanked the investigator before returning to my hotel room, knowing I needed more time to think. Over the weekend, I pondered everything that had happened. By Monday morning, I felt prepared to make an important call. When Gloria answered, her voice trembled with emotion. Hello? It's me, I replied. Are you okay? You sound upset. There was a moment of silence before she spoke again. Darren, oh, Darren, I'm so sorry. I just don't know what to do if you don't come back to us. I've tried to be strong for Vanessa, but I can't stop crying. I'm sorry. I realize now that I took you for granted. You were right. I should have made it clear to that guy that I was with my husband and not interested. I showed you no respect. And I don't know why. Because I do respect and love you. I promise, Darren. If you give me another chance, I'll never make that mistake again. Her heartfelt plea caught me off guard, a stark contrast to her behavior at the dance club. As I hesitated to respond, she jumped to a conclusion. You're not coming back, are you? She asked, her voice filled with despair. No, Gloria, I am coming back, I reassured her, but only on a trial basis. I want my wife back, the woman I fell in love with, the woman I married. She's here, Darren, truly. She's here, waiting for the man she loves, Andrea insisted, her sincerity evident in her voice. We'll see. Despite everything I've been through, the attitude, the lack of closeness, the disrespect, I'm still not entirely convinced. Not yet. I informed her that I'd be going to the motel after work to gather my things, but I'd be home tonight. There was a moment of silence before Gloria spoke, her voice filled with remorse. I love you, Darren. I'm deeply sorry for the way I treated you. I don't want to lose you. Despite her words, I couldn't shake off my reservations. I was still upset, and despite the evidence to the contrary, I couldn't shake the feeling that Gloria knew the man from the dance hall. After work, I collected my belongings and returned home. Vanessa greeted me enthusiastically at the door, unaware of our recent troubles. Gloria was there too, wrapping her arms around me and showering me with affectionate kisses. In that moment, as I kissed her back with fervor, I couldn't deny that I still loved my wife. That was two years ago, and since then, married life has been nothing short of wonderful. Gloria has once again become the woman I fell in love with, both inside and outside the bedroom. A few months back, she surprised me with a birthday party, a gesture we hadn't done much for my birthday in the past, but became a tradition upon my return. Last night marked our 14th wedding anniversary, and this time Gloria took charge of planning the entire evening. When I arrived home from work, she greeted me with tickets to a dinner playhouse to see Man of La Mancha, one of my favorite plays. After the show, we took a leisurely drive down to the lakefront and strolled along the beach. With the moon casting its gentle glow and warm breezes blowing in from the lake, it felt like a scene out of a romantic movie. I love you, darling, I whispered, feeling as if we were still in the honeymoon phase of our relationship. And I love you very much, my dear, replied my adored wife, her eyes sparkling with affection. Although spring had officially arrived a couple of weeks earlier, according to the calendar, it wasn't until this particular day that Gloria could venture outside without her bulky winter coat. It symbolized the definitive end of yet another harsh Chicago winter. Stepping out, Gloria deeply breathed in the fresh morning dew scent left by the gentle April shower overnight. A smile played on her lips as she recalled the warm, secure feeling of being cuddled by her husband in bed listening to the soothing raindrops. On her way to the car, 
Gloria noticed the beautiful blue wildflowers sprouting from the lawn, their resilience in the face of winter's challenges, reminding her of spring's inherent desire for renewal and fresh starts. Humming along to the tunes on the car radio, Gloria headed to the cozy coffee shop where she was meeting her friend Zara, whom she hadn't seen in a while. Zara had a son the same age as Vanessa, Gloria's daughter, and their friendship had blossomed years ago at a school event. Since then, they had remained close friends, sharing each other's joys and challenges. Zara had arrived early, securing a snug table in the corner by the window. They exchanged waves and smiles through the glass as Gloria entered. The aroma of freshly brewed coffee filled the bustling cafe as Gloria joined the queue of customers eagerly awaiting their Colombian bliss. When Zara spotted Gloria, she rose with a grin. Hi, they both exclaimed, sharing a warm hug before settling into their seats. It's been too long, Gloria remarked. How have you been? Zara's eyes lit up as she shared updates. They reminisced about old times, chuckling at memories from school events. Stories about their children flowed, marveling at how swiftly time had flown. As they dove into conversation, Zara leaned in, lowering her voice. Gloria, she whispered, can you keep a secret? Absolutely, Gloria replied, miming locking her lips and tossing the key. What's up? I probably shouldn't be telling you this, Zara confessed, excitement evident. But I've been, well, seeing this guy. Gloria's coffee paused midway to her lips as she stared at her friend in surprise. Wait, are you saying you're considering an affair? Zara flashed a mischievous half-smile. Well, we haven't crossed any lines yet, but I'm seriously thinking about it. It's Eric. He's different, you know? He makes me feel alive. But I'm worried he might lose interest if I don't take it further. Wait, interjected Gloria, concern in her voice. Have you thought about the consequences? Are you ready to risk your marriage for him? Zara shrugged, a hint of nonchalance in her tone. Oh, I'm not talking about leaving Nick or anything. It's just a bit of excitement on the side. The spice of life, as they say, she remarked with a smile. And don't worry, I'd ensure Nick never found out. He'd be devastated if he knew. Plus, Eric's married, too. We'd have to be discreet. Gloria grappled with a surge of anxiety, torn between her loyalty to her friend and her own moral compass. After harboring her own secret for two years, she decided to confide in Zara. Zara, remember a couple of years back when Darren and I went through a rough patch? He actually left me for a while, remember? Yeah, I do. But you never really opened up about it. I didn't want to pry, Zara replied. I never told anyone. And you have to swear not to breathe a word of what I'm about to tell you to another living soul, Gloria said, her tone serious. Zara nodded solemnly. Of course, Gloria, I promise. If this ever got out, it could ruin my marriage. That's why I've kept it buried. But, well... You need to hear it before you make any decisions that could jeopardize your own marriage. Gloria paused as the waitress refilled their coffee cups, then continued, her voice low and urgent. I'm probably not so different from most other married women out there. After 12 years of marriage, I started feeling, I don't know, bored. Everything was becoming routine. It was like after all those years, I looked around and realized, what am I doing? Where am I going? Nowhere. I felt stuck, like I had no real life of my own. Exactly, Zara interjected, her eyes showing understanding. I know exactly how you feel. Zara, I think most women experience something similar. It's not that you don't love your husband. I adore Darren with all my heart. But suddenly, it's like something's missing. I started feeling like I was slipping into a slight depression. Nothing felt exciting anymore, not even lovemaking and it wasn't anyone's fault. Darren was doing everything he could for me, especially in the bedroom. I should have been over the moon. But nothing seemed to lift my spirits, not even school functions. Gloria took a moment to sip her coffee, gauging Zara's reaction. Seeing her friend's attentive expression, she continued, And then I met Louis Hugh. You, you had an affair? Zara asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Gloria nodded solemnly. An emotional affair? Yes. Thankfully, I came to my senses before it turned physical. Thank goodness, she added with a heavy sigh. 
I was at that little grocery store on Marshall Avenue one day, and there he was. Oh, Zara, he was absolutely stunning, with his rugged good looks, sandy blonde hair, and those mesmerizing blue eyes that sparkled like Robert Redford's, and tall, too. I'm certain he was well over six feet. Even with his clothes on, I could tell he had a nice build. I couldn't tear my eyes away from him until he caught me. Of course, I felt myself blushing as he smiled back at me. We began flirting and it was thrilling, almost forbidden. But eventually, I snapped out of it. I needed to focus on my shopping, so I made my way to the produce aisle. As I reached for some tomatoes, I accidentally bumped into him. He looked at me with those captivating blue eyes and that charming smile and greeted me. Zara. I hate to admit it, but I could feel myself getting aroused. It was so embarrassing. I prayed he couldn't sense the scent I was giving off. I must have been blushing profusely. He offered his hand for a shake and introduced himself. Despite seeing my wedding rings, he wasn't discouraged from trying to pursue me. It was flattering to think that a man like him could be interested in me. We conversed and laughed as we moved through the aisles, collecting our groceries. At the checkout, he confidently gave me his number and proposed lunch for the following week. Zara listened intently to Gloria's narrative, finding it strangely familiar. I almost threw away his card. As I left the store, I thought, sure, we'll have a passionate love affair, and then my husband will catch us. But I didn't. What didn't you do? Zara inquired, intrigued. I didn't toss his card. I kept it in my purse. Wow. On the way home, all I could think about was Louis. Darren arrived while I was putting away the groceries. I already felt guilty, so I snapped at him when he tried to help. It was like some unconscious defense mechanism. Poor Darren just asked if something was wrong. Oh my God, what did you tell him? I lied, naturally. I said I was just a little tired from shopping. Truthfully, I was secretly ecstatic. Anyway, Gloria continued, I knew I shouldn't call him. It was wrong. I also knew I was feeling vulnerable. I kept telling myself no, but I couldn't resist. I found one of the last payphones in the city and dialed the number on his card. We agreed to meet for lunch the next day. With anticipation, Zara waited for Gloria to take another sip of coffee before proceeding. Zara, as we headed to the restaurant, my emotions were all over the place. I felt a mix of terror, excitement, and intense desire. At one point, Lewis reached across the table and held my hand. I felt a strong urge to be carnal with him, but guilt or maybe fear stopped me. Nonetheless, I couldn't act on it. But Lewis persisted. He subtly belittled Darren, making me question our relationship. Foolishly, I fell for it, finding myself resenting my own husband. Before I knew it, Lewis had cleverly manipulated me into thinking Darren didn't appreciate me. Your situation sounds so similar, Gloria, Zara commented. That's why I'm telling you this, Zara. I want you to realize what you might be getting into. Has your guy mentioned Nick yet? Not much, Zara replied, pausing. Well, he's asked a few questions, like, does your husband realize how lucky he is? Stuff like that. I understand, Gloria nodded knowingly. And now you're starting to wonder, right? Well, Zara, it's amazing how things can go unnoticed. When Darren left, he mentioned I'd been distant for over two months. I hadn't even realized. Same with our closeness. I couldn't feel passion with someone I felt was taking me for granted. As Gloria recounted her experience, she saw realization dawn in Zara's eyes. Think about it, Zara. What kind of man would have an affair with a married woman? Can you imagine Nick doing that? Nick? No way. He wouldn't do that, Zara firmly replied. Exactly. So why put your marriage at risk for someone like that? Gloria posed the question pointedly. As Zara pondered Gloria's words, Gloria continued her story. Anyway, we met for lunch again the next week, and with each meeting, it became harder to stay faithful to Darren. By our third lunch, he nearly convinced me to go back to his place. I sensed his frustration with my excuses, and I knew if we met for lunch once more, we'd end up in bed together. As we left the restaurant after our third lunch, I casually mentioned needing a new dress because Darren had planned a special anniversary outing. I hinted that we might go to a dance club we used to enjoy, reminiscing about our past fun there. 
Louis saw an opportunity and seized it. He insisted on joining us at the club, saying he'd dance with me. I cautioned him, reminding him it was our anniversary, and dancing with someone else might upset Darren. But Louis, in his arrogance, dismissed my concerns, claiming it would teach Darren a lesson. He wanted to show Darren that other men desired me, thinking it would make Darren appreciate me more. Oh my Gloria, he really showed up at D's? Zara asked, astonished. Gloria took a sip of her coffee before replying, He did indeed. I spotted him as soon as we arrived. Naturally, I ignored him. Darren and I were having a good time until Louis approached, asking me to dance. Oh my goodness, Zara gasped, shocked. Yep, and to make matters worse, he completely disregarded Darren, even being rude to him. Naturally, Darren was offended and gave me an ultimatum, saying I couldn't dance with Louis. You know how stubborn I can be, I said. I got upset and insisted on dancing with him anyway. Darren warned me he wouldn't be there when we finished. But who takes such threats seriously, right? Zara observed, Gloria's eyes welling with emotion as she continued. As we hit the dance floor, I confronted Louis about his behavior toward Darren. I asked why he had to be so disrespectful, to which he replied he wanted to put Darren in his place. That just made me angrier. Of course, Louis kept me close while we danced, but I was mainly concerned if Darren was watching and getting angrier. I was so preoccupied I didn't notice when the first dance ended and we started the second. When the music stopped, I told Louis no more dances. I said I was going to spend the rest of the evening with my husband. As I headed back to our table, I saw Louis trailing behind me. I demanded to know what he thought he was doing, and he said he wanted to apologize to Darren. When we got back, Darren was gone. Louis sat down and casually mentioned he'd wait with me until Darren returned. I had a sinking feeling he had no intention of apologizing. Instead, he seemed bent on stirring up trouble between Darren and me. Why would he do that? Zara asked, puzzled. What would he gain from it? I wondered, guessing he hadn't succeeded in seducing me. So he tried to create discord between Darren and me instead. He probably hoped I'd turn to him for comfort, expecting we'd end up together before the night was over. I assumed Darren had gone to the restroom. I urged Lewis to return to his table, but he hesitated. When the waitress approached, he took the chance to order drinks. It was then she asked if we wanted to start another tab. I was stunned. Darren had already paid the bill before leaving with Zara. It felt like I was witnessing my entire married life unravel. I couldn't fathom he'd left me like that. Gloria's anguish was palpable as she recounted her tale, and Zara couldn't help but feel her friend's pain. Emotions swirled within Zara, and soon a solitary tear trickled down her cheek. You don't have to tell me all this, Gloria, Zara said, her voice thick with empathy. You're upset. Maybe we should pause. No, I need to tell you everything, Zara. Gloria insisted, her resolve clear. You need the full picture. It's crucial. She paused, gathering herself. So, where was I? Right. I immediately dialed Darren, asking him to return and pick me up. That's when he dropped the bombshell. He suspected I was having an affair, possibly with Louis. He said he was considering packing a bag and leaving, uncertain if he'd come back. Gloria reached for a napkin, wiping away tears that welled in her eyes. It hit me like a ton of bricks. Zara, she continued. It was like a sudden realization. Everything became clear. It wasn't Darren taking me for granted. He'd done everything to support me. It was me. I was the one taking him, Vanessa, and our life together for granted. I realized I was risking my entire marriage for some idiot. I pleaded with Darren to return so we could talk, but he refused, so I hailed a cab. What was Lewis doing during all this? Zara asked. Oh, he wasn't giving up, not yet. He insisted Darren didn't deserve me and pressed me to go home with him instead. I shut him down promptly, she recounted with a laugh. But he persisted. He followed me outside and made advances as the cab arrived. I didn't hesitate to give him a knee to the groin. Doubled over in pain, I warned further contact would lead to a closeness intimidation lawsuit. Zara reached out, 
gripping her friend's hand as Gloria brushed away more tears. By the time I got home, Darren was gone. I tried calling, but his phone was off. Zara, I was terrified. I could see my marriage crumbling before my eyes. Everything we'd built, our whole family, seemed on the brink of collapse. I've never been so scared. The next day, I tried reaching him at work, but he refused to talk. His secretary said he'd instructed not to see me if I came by. Feeling desperate, I turned to Andrea, my neighbor. Given Darren's good relationship with her and her husband, I hoped she might convince him to talk to me. Surprisingly, he did speak to her, but only to express the need for time to think and to promise to contact me in a couple of weeks. Understanding that pressuring him would backfire, I opted to grant him the space he requested. Those two weeks were agonizing. Whenever Vanessa was around, I forced a facade of strength, telling her that Daddy was away. But in private, tears flowed freely. I feared I had irreversibly damaged our bond. Gloria paused, her voice thick with emotion. I'm sorry, she said to Zara, wiping tears. It's still hard to discuss even now. Taking a deep breath, she resumed her narrative. As I was saying, Darren finally called and said he was coming home. Zara, I was on the brink of losing everything. And let me tell you, it made me realize the worth of what I had and how incredibly lucky I was. Ultimately, Zara, love must triumph over desire. I love Darren and he loves me. In my view, no man is worth risking that for. Wow, Zara responded thoughtfully. You're absolutely right. I can't imagine what I would do if my husband left me. Did you ever confess the truth to Darren? Are you kidding? After nearly losing him, I couldn't risk a repeat. Sara, I live in constant fear of him uncovering the truth. But since he returned home, I've worked hard to be the best wife I can be. I no longer take him or our marriage for granted. Every day I count my blessings and express my gratitude to Darren with all my heart. I can only hope it's enough if he ever does learn the truth. Zara squeezed Gloria's hand reassuringly. I'm so thankful you shared your story with me, Gloria. You've saved me from a huge mistake. Thank you. The two friends talked a bit longer, then tentatively set their next meeting before saying goodbye. Gloria felt a sense of fulfillment, knowing she had just steered her friend away from a disastrous choice. She made it home just in time to welcome her daughter with a kiss and a snack after school. Vanessa is growing up so fast, she reflected. She'll be ten soon. Where does the time go? When Darren returned from work, Gloria greeted her husband with warm hugs and kisses. Until that day, she had never brought up the topic of their challenging period in their marriage. Talking to Zara reminded her of the wonderful life she and Darren had built together. Later that night, with Darren peacefully sleeping beside her, Gloria turned on her side and propped herself up on her elbow. She studied the lines on his face, each representing the passage of time and cherished memories. With gentle fingers, she traced a few of the newer lines, feeling affection and admiration for the man beside her. Softly, Gloria kissed him. As their kiss deepened, Darren's lips curved into a wide smile. He embraced his beloved wife tightly, returning her affection with a passionate kiss. I thought you were asleep, Gloria whispered. Actually, I was thinking about what to get Vanessa for her birthday, he replied. Do you know what she really needs? What? Gloria asked. A baby brother or sister, Darren declared. Though not entirely surprising, the suggestion of expanding their family brought a smile to Gloria's face. It seemed her husband had made the decision for them. Well, her birthday is only two months away, honey. Shouldn't we start? Gloria teased. Darren's grin widened. You read my mind. Two months later, Vanessa celebrated her 10th birthday with a big party in the backyard. Mom and Dad invited all her friends, making sure there was plenty of ice cream and cake for everyone. After the festivities, Gloria and Darren surprised their daughter with another special gift and the joyful news of an upcoming baby brother, 